So I just ordered some more batteries since my stockpile of batteries was running a bit low. These are scooter packs and um, I got these from Battery uh, Clearing Warehouse and um, these, there's 40 cells in here and these are the LG 3200 milliamp batteries. So these are really high end batteries. These are the highest capacity cells I've ever purchased. Now they are a little expensive. I paid $280 shipped for 200 cells. So I'm paying a little over a dollar a cell. Um, that is kind of expensive if you're doing power wall cells. You know, I, you can still get the, the, the modem cells for around 50 cents a cell. Now they are lower capacity, they're 2200 milliamps, but they're available brand new. They're brand new modem packs um, available and you pay about 50 cents a cell. Again, sm lower density, but you know, these are a dollar, you know, 25 or a dollar 50 probably per cell. Um, and yes, they're higher capacity at 3200 milliamps, but if you're doing power walls, you don't really need the density and the amperage that these cells can, can put out. So I think these are a little overkill for a power wall and a little expensive for a power wall, but they are great for e-bikes. I mean, that's what these are from. These are from scooters and e-bikes and stuff like that. So uh, that's what I want these for. I want, you know, I wanna, I'll probably design a couple more e-bike batteries um, I might have to do an e-bike for a friend, so um, gonna uh, gonna process these and break these down. These are in 36 volt configurations, and there are they have a BMS, and and they've they've been some hack ways. Jehu has sort of hacked um, the BMS with you, where you can sort of reactivate it, but 36 volts is not great for e-bikes. Um, only small e-bikes use 36 volts. Uh, most large e-bikes are um, most large e-bikes are at 48 volts, and now some are even 72 volts. So, at 36 volts, this isn't much use. So, I am going to pull these apart and break them down, and actually turn them into individual cells and process them just as regular cells, and add them to my battery um, battery box so that I have cells for future projects. So, uh, I guess I'll probably I'll take you along as I process these. Okay, let's take these apart. Um, they've got these screws on the end caps. Some of these are missing screws, and then some of them have all their screws, so I'm not 100% sure what that is about, but um, they are security torques, which is a pain. Um, yeah, they're a security torques type. But luckily I have a, have a set of, of random bits, including security torques, so let's uh, pull these apart and check them out. They are very <laughs> deeply threaded. So um, there's the pack, but I think yeah, I think we're gonna have to take off both sides probably, or maybe just this. Sorry, we're probably gonna have to take off this side to uh, get this apart. Okay, screws are out. Let's pull this apart here. Okay, the screws are out, so let's pull this thing out here. Here it comes. Um, again, nice case. Um, wish I could use it for something, but I probably can't. So here it is. I have to say it stinks. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why, but it stinks inside. Um, 
So there is actually a BMS that's in here. Unfortunately, it's fully potted. And uh, yeah, it's got a ton of silicone potting it. So uh, kind of kind of difficult to do anything with it. So we will likely have to just uh, break it apart. Um, let's see what's under this side. Uh, okay, let's see here. Oh, okay, just uh, that's the cells on this side. Thought this would be easy to take apart, but uh, it might be a little bit of a challenge. Now, the interesting thing is, it does sort of appear as though this bus bar is across the cell spot welded like this. It might be interesting to keep the cells in parallel, you know, just break them into two pair, into pair cells and keep the spot weld. Although likely with the BMS on this side, likely this side is not, is not quite the same. So um, we'll have to figure out what's the best way to take this apart and I'll get back with you. Okay, let's carry on. I think I want to get this BMS off and it looks like I'll probably have to shoot for these two screws. Um, you can tell there's all this potting compound on here. But let's see if we can put a put a small screwdriver in there and get it to to come out. Okay, find my pH one. See what happens here. Okay, with those two screws removed, I guess now we get to figure out how do we remove the board. Okay, so over here you can see it says cell plus, and there is there was this nickel um, contact here, which is going from the BMS down to the cells, and it was a big thick nickel one. And I ended up um, just sort of putting my snips in there and cutting that negative, oh, that positive contact there. So cell positive is now disconnected. And now I think I can use a, a plastic tool in here to wedge. There we go, we got something happening now. There we go. Um, so yeah, you, you cut the, the main negative there, then you've got something to wedge on. Now, uh, the, the, the there are more, even though we cut these wires here, here are the other balance leads that go to the top of the cell. So we might have to cut those in order to be able to um, remove the BMS. Okay, why is it being stubborn here? The screw's removed, so what is holding it here? Okay, there we go. Interesting, these are temperature sensors that they have built into the BMS. Um, this is a nice BMS if we could uh, use it, but apparently it is um, turned off from factory and uses some sort of proprietary um, command calls. Okay, BMS is basically removed. It's, I need to cut some wires, but you gotta be careful when you cut wires because um, if I gotta make sure that I'm not connected in any way here. Because um, if, if we're still connected to anything, it could short out. And I don't think I have any 
I think these are all just communication cables. I think I have broken all the... Okay, there we go. BMS is removed and now these cables can actually be pulled through the potting. And now we are left with this. Um, let's remove this cap here. Okay, there we go. Now, just so you know, this is a 36 volt battery and now that we have exposed access to the contacts, there is really no reason you couldn't solder on a BMS, and, you know, and stick a regular BMS on the side and, hit, and, and uh, put the BMS wires on these contacts and use this exactly as it is. I mean, this is a perfectly good 36 volt battery. We just adjust that the BMS on it is a proprietary BMS that isn't actually isn't actually turned on right now and we have no way of turning it on so um, that's why we had to do what we had to do but there is no reason um, that we can't um, that we can't use this as a 36 volt battery just as is um, now I am definitely for some of these I'm going to pull these all the way apart um, so the next thing we'll, to do will probably be to um, cut these uh, uh, these pieces that grow across here because I need to get the get the get the plastic off and it does look like this um, runs over yeah it looks like the some of this nickel runs over the plastic cap so I will have to cut this nickel strip um, in order to be able to pull the pull the pack apart so I guess we'll do that next. Okay, so even though each one of these nickel strips looks pretty beefy, they're actually actually only held on with two little tacks that are almost like um, they're almost like fuses. Um, there's just two little nickel contacts that touch each cell. So if you can, uh, so you just sort of break one of the cells, one of the contacts, and then get a wedge tool in there, plastic wedge tool. Then you can grab it and rip it off. And now all of those are disconnected. So repeat that process and on both sides and I guess we'll be, should be able to pull the plastic caps off. Okay, with the nickel off on both sides, I thought I could just pull these plastic caps off, but they are very tight. And I looked some more and I realized there's some screws in these holes holding the two packs, the two plastic caps together. So, one more time, we gotta remove some screws. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, I guess this one might still be stuck. There we go. And here you have 40 cells. And let me...
I'm sort of holding them in place. They're a little sticky and they're a little, I thought I could just lift them out, but they're a little, I guess we can do it. Okay, we can do it that way. And you can see these are LG MH1 cells ready for 3200 milliamps and 10 amp discharge. Great cells. All right, there's my first batch of 40 cells. Now, um, uh, I, uh, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a volt, I, am, I think I will go around and clean up these tabs. And then I'm gonna put a voltmeter on these, make sure that there are no really low bad cells in here. If they all look pretty good, these all should be at about three and a half volts because I did measure the pack before I disassembled it and the pack's at 36 volts. And this is a 10S pack, so these should all be around three and a half volts. If they're all around three and a half volts, then uh, I'm not gonna do testing on them. They're gonna go straight into charge um, and storage. Um, I'm gonna you know, get them ready for storage because they're going into my battery um, inventory. Um, if there are some dads, then I'll, I'll pull those out and, and I'll mark them with my red line so I know that they're you know, potentially bad cells. And uh, we'll go from there. But, yeah, I got 200 cells to clean up and charge up and get ready and, uh, and then I can use them on some future projects. So one extra step that I do is clean my cells a little bit. These were pretty tough spot welds to break off and they've left pretty mean um, little nibs on there. And so I actually take a grinding, a little grinding stone and I actually clean up the cells and um, just to get a nice smooth bottom because again, I'm going to be spot welding back on this or maybe soldering depending on what I'm going to use it for. And uh, you know, this nib is just going to create issues when I, uh, when I go to use it. So I just uh, clean it up a little bit. There we go, nice and smooth on both ends. Be careful when you do this side, you don't want to damage this insulator ring. Um, this, is a, this is good for when you rebuild the pack, but this also uh, keeps the positive away from the negative side. So if you're not careful and you damage with that, um, then you could cause a short if you had like an, a, a metal tool between here and the, the negative case. So watch the insulator ring and then just um, clean up the, you know, just cl clean up the cell and then some of this plastic that gets a little damaged, I do tend to clean it up a little bit. And that's how I clean my cells. <laughs>